Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Oh, welcome back, we are live here on theCUBE, which of course is the flagship broadcast of SiliconANGLE, and uh, we're really at media, and we're very glad to have here with us for the second of our three days of coverage here at reInvent AWS, throwing quite a bash here at the Sands in Las Vegas, along with Stu Miniman. I'm John Wallace, and we're joined now by Amanan Shah, who is the uh, Director of Product Management, or at our eight Director of Product Management, I'd say at Cisco Systems. Are you used to hearing that yet at Cisco Systems? We are getting close Pri to primarily it. Primarily yes. at the Papello you know, before acquisition just three months ago, so things are going well for you. Things are going great. Uh, we are really excited to take the journey forward. It's been less than 90 days since we got acquired. Uh, we had a great ride at Viptela as a ST-WAN company. We were the market leaders with the largest traction in the Fortune 500 space. And, uh, and natural, Cisco was a natural fit, and now we are, we are very excited to take this journey forward with Cisco's broader partner ecosystem and the customer base. So, so what's that all about? What brought the two of you together in your, in that, your that's opinion? A, that's a very interesting question. You mean other than money? Yeah, well, <laughs> well yeah, always the big driver. Absolutely. But when it comes down to doing business, what yeah. was it? So if, if you look at Cisco and how they are transitioning, I'll talk about business and technology together. Uh, if, you, if you talk about business, Cisco as a company is all moving towards subscription-based business model. A large portion of Cisco's business today is very CapEx heavy. And Viptela was all about subscription business model. And so that was very attractive to Cisco. The other, other piece was we, we went head to head against Cisco in a lot of different Fortune 500 accounts and we had a lot of success. So they saw the solution that we brought to the table and they saw the benefits of keeping it simple yet sophisticated. That, that was the strength of Viptela solution. And, and that, that was very, very enticing to Cisco. The other piece was that this large deployments, uh, a lot of customers are moving towards a cloud first model. And uh, one of the key value props of Viptela was everything was cloud first. And 90% of our customers, we were hosting their control plane and management plane in a cloud. And so as customers move towards this cloud journey, they wanted to consume it as a service. And that is very attractive to Cisco also. So all of these together made it very attractive for Cisco to look at us uh, as not just a competition, but something that they can build on the build the business. Compliment, right? Yeah. So the SD WAN's been a hot space, and you know, been a couple of acquisitions that happened. Cisco had you know one or two solutions already before the acquisition, depending on who you talk to. Talked about that fit. Can you walk us through a little bit? Kind of you know, I'm sure you got to go through the portfolio stuff, how you position it, things like sure. that. You think about the customers, but yeah, yeah. walk us through. So the, the Cisco, Cisco had Ivan solution, yeah. uh, which was the legacy uh, Stevan solution that Cisco had. Cisco also has Miraki as Stevan solution, right. and now with uh, now with the acquisition, Cisco has Viptela based Stevan. So the way we looked at it is the way Viptela's sd wan solution was built is all of the intelligence was in the fabric. And, and the end nodes were what we call the edge routers were connecting into the, into the fabric and building the, leveraging the intelligence that was there. Now the end nodes could be residing in a branch, residing in a data center or in a cloud location like AWS. And so the way we are approaching is the intelligence will all remain in the fabric and rather than just having Viptela's routers as the end node, we will leverage the Cisco's broader portfolio as end nodes into that fabric. So if you look at Viptela's, it was all Ethernet based products. Now if you wanted a T1E1 interface, if you wanted a DSL interface, we, so Viptela did not have it. Cisco already has it. So it naturally made sense to leverage all of the breadth of portfolio that Cisco had and build that into the fabric. And that is what we are moving towards. In the next few months, we will have a new software which will leverage all of those capabilities and have the full breadth of portfolio connect into that sd wan fabric. All right, can you connect the dots with us now, being here at AWS, how's that fit in? Uh, you know, networking, of course, critical component uh, for cloud, but yeah. Absolutely, and this is the best time. I mean, if you look at uh, what AWS did over the last few months, they actually had a third party evaluate a lot of different sd wan vendors, and they published a paper that talked about intro to sd wan where they listed all of the vendors and the capabilities, so they are acknowledging sd wan as a big movement going forward and a big market, and they want to be part of it. And uh, we have seen a lot of customers 
as they move their workloads into cloud and uh, into AWS, they want to extend the network fabric, continue to use the same tools that they've been using and automate the capability of extending the fabric into the cloud. So segmentation, uh, so security, visibility, automation, those are some of the key, key value prop or key data point that customers are asking us saying, we want a single tool that will do that. And that is what we have done with the automation that we have built. Yeah, uh, I've seen over the last, this is my fifth year at the show, about two years ago, networking seemed to really kind of pick up. If, if I'm correct, I saw more than one Cisco booth even, because I think there was another acquisition That's right. Cisco have. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of kind of Cisco in, in the public cloud these days, you know? Yeah, so Cisco has, has always embraced cloud, and Cisco's overall strategy has been, we will enable customers to take their workloads wherever they want to be. So whether it's the traditional data centers or AWS or any other cloud, Cisco always has this multi-cloud strategy and having, uh, helping customers to build this fabric that would extend not only from branch to data centers, but branch to cloud, branch to data center, data center to cloud, no matter where the applications are, no matter where the users are. It's all about connecting users to applications wherever they decide. So, so what's affecting that in terms of multi-cloud? Um, and my decision about where I'm going to put whatever workload. I mean, um, different capabilities, right? I've got Absolutely. different considerations. So, yes. so what do you think is motivating people now, or what, what's, what's instigating people to make these decisions about what they're going to do where? So, so there, there's various there's evaluation criteria on how you adopt a cloud. So a lot of customers start with one cloud, get familiar with it, run some DevOps uh, dev, dev application, then run some production application. Once they get comfortable with it, then they want to expand to multi-cloud and, and have less reliance on one particular cloud, but essentially leverage the best of what each cloud provider has to offer. And that is what we, we want to enable our customers to do connect applications uh, wherever, whichever cloud they decide, and connect users to those applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when I think back, I've worked with Cisco for a lot of my career, you know, branch was something that was critically important. How much has changed moving to cloud? How much is the same kind of extending from branch to cloud? Yeah, that's a great point. If you look at how the branch and the van has not evolved for the last 20 years, it is all about MPLS and the connectivity and getting service from the providers, well, with applications moving outside of data center into cloud, historically you would take all of your branch traffic into your data center, get it serviced by the applications that are in the data center, and only about 5% would go out to the internet. But if the applications are in the cloud, do, why do I need to take all the traffic from branch to the data center? Why can't I just go from branch to the cloud? Or data center to the cloud? Or campus to the cloud? So the fundamental design principles have changed. And as a result, you have to evolve in terms of how you design the van, how you deploy it, and how you evolve the thought process around consumption model. The other aspect that has changed is uh, because of internet and cellular and customers want to build the ST, ST van fabric, that is transport agnostic. You can leverage MPLS, you can leverage internet, you can leverage cellular. Why do I care about what connected? I tie my applications to a certain SLA. As long as any path that meets that SLA, I'm, I'm okay as the solution takes, as long as it's secure. And that is what customers are looking for. The last piece that customers are looking for is the change in the consumption model. A lot of customers want to consume it as a service. Historically, they would get everything from a, from a MSP or a service provider. Now they are looking at, okay, how do I, instead of having everything in, in my frame, consume it as a service? And that's where we saw in the early days of Webtela, 90% of our customers consuming control plane and management plane from our hosted locations. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, uh, want to understand, you know, it's been three months since the acquisitions. Uh, I, I'd expect being part of Cisco, you get access to a lot more customers. What else has changed? What, what is like coming to an event like this under the Cisco umbrella mean? Yeah, so there are a few other things that have changed. Uh, the first and foremost, as you rightfully said, is access to a lot of Cisco customers. Cisco is a great brand, and uh, I mean, going against them, I, I always face that, and now being part of Cisco, I am leveraging that. Cisco is a great brand, and what, what customers want is that, that, that the product from Cisco that is solid and that works for years to come. The other aspect that has changed is with us being part of Cisco, we are not only leveraging the customer and the partner ecosystem, we are integrating with the broader product portfolio that Cisco has. I gave you the example of the routing portfolio that we are integrating in. 
In addition to that, Cisco has a great product portfolio on the security side. So we are, lever we are integrating into Cisco's security portfolio as well to provide this end-to-end -end customer solution that leverages security, networking, and a whole bunch more. Yep, so, um, I don't know if it's a friction point, but I mean, you did things a certain way. Absolutely. Right? You were a, a competitor. Yes. Uh, Cisco does things a certain way. Yes. They were a competitor. So I mean, how, how do you make that work? I mean, because ultimately there, there, there's got to be, I, mean, I have to just assume, some, some difference of, uh, of uh, approach. And, and I, would, I would be very it's honest. It's inevitable, right? Yeah, it's inevitable and it's, it's there. I mean, the way, the pace at which we were delivering, right, we want to continue to deliver at the same pace because we want to continue to innovate at the pace that we were delivering as a, as a startup. And that is one of the promises that uh, Cisco has done. Cisco leadership has been very upfront about, tell us what worked as a startup and we want to incorporate that. And that, that has been one of the surprising things that I, when walking in, I was always cautious that, hey, would we be able to execute at the rate we want to execute? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the leadership promises that we have got is we are behind you, we fully trust the capabilities that you have, go run with it. And, and, and we, are, we see that day in and day out across the entire leadership team. It's a great stamp to have, right? It is a great stamp to have. And yeah. now, when we were as a startup, a lot of customers, when we're trying to close the business, they will say, do I really want to do business with the startup? And there was always that financial and uh, other contingencies yep. that would come into the table. Yep. All of those is off table now. Right. Now that we are part of Cisco, we have the Cisco brand, the brand that's backing us. And that's been a huge advantage and it has increased our sales pipeline significantly. Right, your world's gone to this. Exactly. Uh, right, right. Well, good for you. Congratulations yeah, thank on the you. acquisition. And uh, look forward to uh, maintaining a, the surveillance on the progress here. Absolutely, also we are very start. excited. Thank you, Manan. Thank you. Good, Manan uh, Shaw from Cisco Systems. Back with more, Stu and I will be here from reInvent. We're at AWS here in Las Vegas and back in a bit. <laughs>